And we talked that <coughs> the subjects that we go over, we mentioned the other night that if we don't meditate on them and don't keep trying to revisit them for at least a week at a time, <coughs> it becomes… I remember that I took a calculus class in my younger days and it didn't come easy for me. And they would talk, they would give a formula, I had no idea what this Chinese is writing on this, this chalkboard, it completely went over my head and I gave up. So by the second, third, fourth, fifth sessions I didn't know what they were talking about and my, that class became like a picnic time for me. Just sit in there, rest and do other things, draw nice pictures for myself, I gave up. So it means if we don't keep up with the knowledge and just keep throwing more knowledges out, I think we tend to lose the focus of people because they kind of get lost in the whole shuffle of what, what are we now on, what subject is this, what is… we just keep moving so fast into these different realities. We don't seem to understand that people have really grasped the understanding. So it is important to revisit it, it's important for the, the our audience online that when we talk on a subject to meditate throughout the week for it, try to go deeper into the understanding of it, how do we apply it, not to challenge it where we want to say, oh, okay you know, here's an ayah that opposes what you just taught. We're not here to challenge the teaching and, and say that the Nashbandi shaykhs are… so that's not the, the point. The point is how to go deeper and apply the reality. So we received an email for example, someone asking that, how listening to qaybat is as bad as speaking the qaybat? Which was, okay that, that's a nice question, you know, there's nothing to be shy from. And it's understanding, so something on a subject like that. When we talk about backbiting and slander, it's a crime. If you kill somebody, you stab them once they're dead, analogy. Backbiting is like stabbing them many times. You're talking about somebody, not in the presence of somebody and if it's correct, you're slandering. If it's incorrect, you're backbiting. Or if it's correct, it's backbiting and if it's incorrect… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're slandering because you're making up a story of somebody. But it's interesting because the wisdom and hikmah of understanding sharia is it's a crime that requires a partner. So let me ask you in this law of crimes because everything has to have a wisdom and understanding, is backbiting to a wall a crime? According to Allah? No. I can talk all I want to my wall that I don't like you, I don't like him, I don't like what she did, I don't like what they did and I would highly recommend that. Take your turban, put it on your lampshade and, and give it to him to tell him all the things you don't like about him, all the things you don't like about this person. It's a crime that requires a partner. And as a result you become the partner. So think of all the times that you didn't want to participate, the crime stopped. So one is that why? Why is the one listening as bad? Well because you became a partner to this crime. If you didn't have anyone to talk to there would be no crime 
there was no offense committed. The actual offense of the backbite and slander is when there was somebody to speak it to. Now imagine those guys were now putting out internet and attack the shaykh, attack all these things. That you can never retrieve and may go out into 10,000, 5,000, 2,000. Imagine then the extent of that type of punishment by the Divine. Where the crime with just one person how difficult it is to resolve. And it can't be forgiven by Allah because it's an offense against somebody else, it's not an offense against Allah So the only rectification of the crime is to go to the person and re-pull it out and say, no, I'm, I apologize for what I said, it was incorrect, not worth me saying it and you have to make the forgiveness. That person has to forgive you that you said those things. So the only way to clean that crime is to seek the forgiveness of the one who was injured by the offense. So it means the wisdom is it's a crime that requires a partner. If you want to become the partner to every gossip and ask everyone, so what was it? What was it? You're now becoming a partner to that crime as if they put the person down because now how Prophet begins to describe his defense is that they put them down, they began to stab them. Now you became a partner and you began to stab also. So you're a partner now in this crime and that's why it's such an offensive sort of badness against the Divinely Presence. It's remedy that if we don't want to become a partner to the crime then what Prophet described is that in the attack of your brother when they're not present why didn't you defend them? So that's the remedy for this sickness is immediately step into the defense of the individual. So I don't think that's the case, you have to give 70 excuses. I think the person was actually this, maybe they're stressed out but let's not talk about it anymore. So that you came to the defense of the individual, you saved them from the attack and that you closed the subject. And that's the only way to be safeguarded from ghaibah. We're talking about direct ghaibah to people you know, to religious people, to uh, important, not watching a television show that you just have a choice not to worship. But when a person is about to slander and open their mouth, they're looking for a partner, shaitan's trying to take two people into this crime. The only defense against this crime is to immediately rush to the defense and say, absolutely not, that's not the case, this person is a good person and end of subject, don't want to talk about it anymore. And you find the person has nobody to commit a crime with and the subject actually stops at that time. So alhamdulillah. Allah shall inspire within ourselves this goodness of character and it's the depth of its understanding towards this maqam of good character so that Allah to be pleased with us inshaAllah. What we got from our loving audience online inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Does Allah send down so much affliction in the month of Safar and then Rabbiul Awal follows reminding people that all afflictions will be relieved only through the birth of Rahmatan lil Alameen? <clears throat> we, we don't like to think Allah sends affliction. That we say it's the holy month of Safar. Not the month of azab. Subhana man huwa alim al hakim, the all knowing and wise. So we say, what are the tajalli? All knowing and wise. This is the time that these tajallis and emanations is in the reality of the Muhammadan light. Means under the pada of safar, Allah is eternally, Subhana man alim al hakim, making the zikr on the soul of Prophet and the emanation and tajalli of haybah is right what Allah is eternally dressing the reality of Prophet by imitating we're trying to catch these realities. 
So, haiba and majesty in a cesspool of rats is going to burn. So what Allah sends always is pure, Allah doesn't send affliction. Means that these are lights and emanations of beauty. Now people who engage with rats, I don't think they're going to appreciate Allah's dress of beauty. What happens then between truth and falsehood when they meet? The truth comes and begins to burn the falsehood within people. That burning is affliction and difficulty because the one whom dressed and happily walking in falsehood, when the light of truth begin to dress them, well it has to burn many layers of difficulty and badness because their falsehood they think they're beautiful in their falsehood. But the truth sees it and says, this is what's all this mud on you? Have you seen those people in those country? They say, these are holy people, they have mud all over them and they're standing in, I don't know, look like a waste. And that this is holy? Look, look at what's all this mud all over them. And if you come with the truth and say, no actually the truth is very pure, I'm not going to scrub you clean, what do you, you've been fooled by the devil. Well, they're not going to enjoy this process of scrubbing and cleaning. So your act of cleaning is going to be screaming on the person who's dirty. The person who's clean loves the water. So they're clean, they make wudu, they feel beautific with the wudu because the, the, the beauty of what they're dressed already appreciates that other beauty. So the light to the light, so that becomes why there's difficulties in the month of Safa. People whom are filling themselves with negativity and these positive lights and energy and haiba, a majestic dress that straightens crookedness. Because Allah describes this is a book in which there is no crookedness, again crookedness because the path has to be the straight and narrow. Your path has to be straight, so you have to be straight up, you have to be correct and clean and, and crystal clear. There's no crookedness with Allah I'll go here, hide, do steal this, do like this, do like that, do come back here. Because the crookedness means you always go off somewhere, where did he go and then came back. Then he went off somewhere else and then he came back. And then appear to people that he's walking a path but no he's going off on these different tangents everywhere. And Allah is describing even this month this sort of begins with, this is, a, this is a book in which there is no crookedness. So anything crooked what happens when majestic might comes? It takes it and pulls it straight like going to chiropractor and sort of cracking all your bones so that they are aligned. That process of cleansing can make people feel that they're having difficulties. But that's so that we fall in line with what Allah wounds for us and that's why we described the beginning was rocks. If, I, if Allah doesn't send some rocks how will you get haiba? If you don't get tested how are you going to get any of these dresses and these realities? And that's why 90% of people and Muslim people they don't. They don't get the reality, they don't even understand the reality. So that doesn't become something for them. Allah sends them different realities and different testings and they achieve through that. But if you talk to them about this reality and this type of knowledges they don't understand it nor do they or have any interest in it. So it means then every, every station, every rank has its price to pay. So Allah's grace and majesty is, is, the, is the dress that comes to the servant through difficulties and testings. Only through the test Allah can give a reward and a grade, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Thank you for this explanation. And Allah forgive me for being a partner to this crime, you have given me the solution so perfectly, alhamdulillah. 
<coughs> Allah bless you, alhamdulillah. For myself too to understand. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaikum As Salaam Sayyidi, can we leave the company of people who bring out the worst in us and cause fitna even if they are relatives? I would limit the company of people who bring out the worst in anyone. So Sayyidina Ibrahim had to give a word of peace and go his way. His father was not going to be happy until he becomes idol worshipper and he was not going to be happy unless he kept testing his father. So Allah says, that's not going to be of any benefit so give a word of peace and, and go your way. So the, if, if it leads to an argument and dispute it's not liked by Allah So we distance ourselves, and those are in all the other talks of solitude. Because either we're going up in the elevator or down. And every time we go down we realize, I don't really like the people on this level. So it's not loneliness but the servant becomes more content in solitude, feels safer in solitude, feels the energy is, is much cleaner in solitude. So when they build their energy and they have to keep taking the elevator to go down, it's difficult for them. Because the energy, what they have to carry, the burdens of people, they'd rather quickly get in the elevator, go back up and keep to their solitude, do their zikr. And they're not lonely because Allah's with them, Prophet is with them and those whom uh, love them are with them. So it means there's a system that Allah has given for us. But many people try to find their enjoyment in other people. They think for some reason if they're surrounded by many, many people, many, many relatives that it gives them purpose or meaning in life, they find a happiness in life that doesn't because that, that purpose is not a, I think of any benefit because as soon as you rely on other people they disappoint you by saying awful things and all of a sudden then you feel like purposeless, you feel like worthless and all of these emotions are from what? putting my value in the hands of someone else. So then there was an analogy that they put out because these other people are now all trying to teach in this awoken state, father gives his child a car and says, here's a key to a car I'm going to give to you. And let's say it was a very old Mercedes for example and before I let you to drive it take this car to the dealership and then come back and tell me what they said the value was. Takes the car, goes to the dealership and the dealership says, it's so old, what's all this? Why don't you get rid of this piece of junk and we get you nice beautiful this, tell your dad to get you this car. Immediately took the key, went back to dad, he said, he says it's a piece of junk, maybe thousand bucks. So okay, then here's the key, go to this auto mechanic lot and ask them what's this car and what's the value of this car. Takes the key, goes to the auto mechanic lot and says that, my dad wants to give me this car, what's the value of this? Says, okay it's not that bad of a piece of junk, let me look at the engine, yeah it's probably worth 2000, not that bad, no problem. Takes the car back, says, this guy was a little bit better than the dealer, he said 2000. Said, okay, but before you can drive it I have one last place to go. This is a Mercedes group of car collectors, take this car and go to them. Drive the car to there, they say, this car is, oh my god, this is an amazing car you're, jo you're driving. Do you know the value of this car? And the kid says, no, this is at least hundred thousand dollars, this is a collector's piece. You know you should cherish this car, make sure you keep it nice and clean, don't scratch anything, don't do anything wrong with the car. And immediately the person realized, whoa, took the key, went back to dad and said, what did he say? He said, hundred thousand dollars for this car. He says, that's right. What changed? It means it, it wasn't the car that changed but the group of people you're with, they don't value you. 
So be amongst those whom value you so that your true reality can come out. The car didn't change but one guy wants to sell you a new car, the other guy wants to repair cars so he's not interested in the value of you. But you go to the people whom collect it, they understood the reality. It means same thing when people don't value us, change who you're with because we have a value. So when, when I take my identity to the wrong location, they're actually frightened of me, they don't care for me, they want to probably be rude to me. Then Allah would be asking me, then why are you sitting with these people? Why are you in their territory, in their areas? Go to where you are valued. So we understood in our lives, it's not the people left us, they don't value us. Why waste your time to be amongst them? Be with those whom keep the value and the respect of the way, especially if you're representing Prophet and these haqqaiqs and these realities. So it's, it's, a, it's a way not to be depressed of everything but to understand maybe we're in the wrong place and they don't see our true reality and what we're trying to accomplish. So that we have to find the group, so we find a home with each other through these associations, through these zikrs, through these knowledges because it's a commonality. My value is in my love and proximity to Sayyidina Muhammad That's not going to be at, at understood at all if I sit down and talk to a bunch of uh, professors at a university, they would think I have absolutely no value and what's the purpose of being even around this guy. So alhamdulillah there's a hikmah and a wisdom in everything. We pray that Allah always give us the hikmah and the wisdom and, and the solution for every type of difficulty, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is speaking on injustice done to you by others considered backbiting? No, if it's a truth about yourself and you've been oppressed then it has to, it, it again has its own verifications. So that uh, that's an open sort of what. If somebody leaves the tariqah and people don't understand maybe this person did something wrong the shaykh asked him to actually leave. They go out and they start backbiting and in their mind they think they've been unjustly treated. How would you define that then at that time? Well Allah says in Qur'an, anytime somebody comes to you and says something bad about somebody, call and verify it, right? Because Islamically that was throughout the history. Somebody would say something then they would begin to try to talk about it, gossip it and that's, that's when the communities fall apart. But when somebody comes to you about a holy person and begins to say every type of badness, the one hearing it is now a party to the crime and that they're responsible to verify it before their heart changes, their understanding changes and now they distance themselves from that guide or that the, the one is their shaykh. So these are very dangerous sort of things that people do and it's usually those people whom have been asked to leave doing those exact type of damages. They go onto the internet and begin to say all sorts of inappropriate things because they were nicely asked that, you know, we don't have the ability to contain you, to deal with you and the mental difficulties that you're putting. It's not a trained hospital. We don't have people dispensing medicine to calm them down. We don't have a police force that, you know, controlling people who are doing sort of bizarre activities. So, you know, the shaykh has to say, based on our limited abilities, you can't come to the center. You can watch online all, all you want but doesn't mean they're going to go away happy, most likely they're going to begin to attack and, and to say every type of badness. So anytime in life we're dealing with thinking something was unjustly done to us or, or we've been oppressed, it has to be verified by other people.
So they're not just hearing one side of the story, what was the proof of the injustice and what, what particularly took place and that are you trying to stand up for an oppression or something that had been done, then it's a whole case that has to be put together with all sides. Because somebody's one-sided story is not the truth of oppression inshaAllah. Because we know we live through that on a daily basis. Somebody may say they're oppressed but that's just their nafs trying to fight back because they didn't like the teaching, they didn't like the subject, they didn't like the interaction, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, I was planning to seclude myself for a month but I only lasted five days. I got inspired to be in service to go give out food. From me leaving the cave was the right choice? Yes, definitely. They can't uh, seclude ourselves or try to, to do a seclusion on our own desire. That has to come by order of Prophet that you are now to seclude yourself. We have permission to isolate throughout the day that after Asr we take to our prayer niche and we meditate, learn how to do our tafakkur, do our zikr. You need the tools for isolation. So that has to be gradually learned after Salatul Asr. So from that point on like you come home at maghrib time, you eat, you sit with your family and begin to do a little bit of isolation with sitting and meditating, connecting your heart. But without doing any of those and just saying, I'm going to do what for 30 days? But what are you going to do for 30 days? I'm going to go and do make hundreds of thousands of zikrs but you could go mad because you didn't learn how to connect with the shaykh. Maybe you go in there hallucinate, talk to your nafs and make all sorts of fantasies in your mind. So no, that's not, not the, the way of the tariqah, it's very disciplined, you have to have a very strong connection with the shaykh and a strong understanding on how to use that connection. Some people we described before with the people that we had problem with is you make a connection and then you start to fantasize. Oh the shaykh is telling me to get this, to be with this, to do like this and it's just all in their fantasy. And they didn't verify anything physically. And the tariqah connection is only to connect with energy and to the presence of Prophet It's never to be used for dunya. As soon as you try to use the connection for dunya, the spiritual connection leaves and then it becomes nafsani. And that's where the dangers because then shaitan will sit on the other side of the channel and say, yes, you must do that, yo you must do this and that, that's something. So they connect only to connect to energy, not for their job, not for their money, not for their honey, nothing. Just Connect to be with Prophet in energy. If you reach that energy and you felt burning and you felt the presence of the shaykh, that's good. If you sat and say, no I'm connected and now I want to start asking questions and talk, there is no shaykh there and most likely shaitan is playing with that person, coming and making everything dunya. <clears throat> that's not the connection. You're not allowed to ask them the dunya stuff. So otherwise then people will say, can I get like lottery numbers? No, because this dunya will never end. What's the difference you ask lottery numbers or a job or, or, or money issues? <clears throat> it's not supposed to be used for dunya, it's only supposed to be used for you to be burnt to nothing and that you feel the energy and the qudra start to reach towards your soul, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa if we're very crooked and we don't want to have a hard time straightening out this suffer, what can we do to make it easier? Captain Crook. <laughs> <laughs> All he gave us remedy that say, as for the madad, Sayyidina Abu Ahmad Sughuri with the Sallallahu Alaihi And that that madad to, to come to support us to make the, the tajalli to be, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُنُوا بَعْدًا وَسَّلَامًا عَلَى Ibrahim. To be cool and peaceful for us, give sadaqah, give water, give uh, khidmat and service. So many ways to bring Allah's Divinely grace 
and meditate, meditate. Make the connection, this is the month to the cave is opening and trying to move towards the cave, inshaAllah the realities of the cave. Recite the awrad of the month has seven surat al-feel and we described two years ago, why would surat al-feel be the protection for this month? Well because the Kaaba is the heart, the heart is the cave and if you want protection to enter into the cave then Allah has to send a protection on your heart. As He protected with Arbabil and the angelic birds that protected the physical Kaaba, there must be angelic birds that are protecting our heart. And that by reciting these surahs seven times every day, these angels are guarding the heart of the believer so that we can enter into the Divinely Heart, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So it must have an immense reality. And in that sobat about Surat Al-Feel was about the reality of the heart, that our heart is the Kaaba. We want to make it the Kaaba, we want Allah's home to be within our house, Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah. So how do we become mu'min and how do we make the heart to become Baytullah? And that then is the entry point of this month, to have alim and hikmah, ilm and knowledges and wisdom, how to have good manners, so it's a whole package. So I want the manners like a dog in which loyal and that they throw rocks at me, test me in life and that I stay and remain calm and good character. No character then I'm going to eat somebody as soon as I get angry. And then that's why you see that many people get tested this month and, and they get angry and they fire off all sorts of anger so they have to be careful because the, the path is very real, very real, inshaAllah. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum as Sayyidi, what is the role of Sayyidina Kandiyas in our movement towards destroying our lower authorities? We describe that there's a name for everything and from the realities of Ayatul Kursi and the way that Mawlana Shaykh gave the du'a of Ayatul Kursi is written in a different way through the spiritual channels and uh, Malik al-Khandiyas is a, is a khadim of Ayatul Kareem and the caretaker of that ayah. And by asking Aqsamtu Alayka to have their madad, to have their support then is a protection for us in the destruction of bad character, in the, in the protection against shayateen. All, all of these go into our book of names. And then you have a book of all these names in all your du'as so that uh, it builds a, a deep understanding. The Churubin, uh, all the different names of the angels and, and realities that Mawlana Shaykh inspiring, teaching and giving out. So they all play a role at all times for the protection of the heart, purification of the heart, the defense of the heart. So alhamdulillah. The angels for the Milad al-Nabi and we describe from Shaykh Daghestani that they are huge, huge, immense, immense. He said like grey fighter jets, they were immense and thunderous. And they represent the Mawri, the Nabi and that anybody who observes and celebrates the milad of Prophet Allah bring into existence that angel for that servant. And that angel makes salawat till the Yawm al mashar until the day in which they be raised. And those salawats to dress the servant, bless the servant, means everything we do has such immense realities that can't be understood, can never be understood and people will be ajabai, will be astonished.
that well, what I didn't know that uh, supporting the Mawlid did like that. That every time that Allah bring an angel, immense angel that makes durood the sharif upon Prophet why make it to be so grand and so enormous is that Allah wants to show the magnificence of Prophet That all the other angels astonished by the size and the salawat of this angel and comes into existence every time the servant celebrates the milad of Prophet Imagine the servants that support and celebrate continuously. What type of angels surround them? What type of lights dressed upon them? Every time that angel makes a salawat, who's its benefactor? It's the servant. That's why Allah brings an angel for you to do these things. So Allah brings an angel that keeps making beautific salawats to dress you to raise your station on a continuous like jariyah basis. You did something one time, this angel will do this for all of eternity on your soul. This is how merciful and loving Allah is but it just requires a, a, a mercy. Then you're astonished that how shaitan blocks the remembrance of the birthday of Prophet He didn't have anything for anyone. It wasn't like telling them, you have to go here, jump on this plane, you see that dirty water, you have to go jump into that dirty water, you have to survive every type of possible death to do this and to do that, nothing, nothing difficult. Just open your tongue and say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ali Sayyidina Muhammad and then they start to block the person, don't do it, don't say this, don't do that. So they say, worry about me, worry about those people who are going to the Ganges river and doing every type of dirtiness, every type of sickness, that you don't block. This beatific action you're trying to block, then you can see there must be an immense reward, there must be immense lights and the shaitan is so fearful of this action. Do you see them ever complaining about the, the dirty and nasty character and actions of other people's uh, things? No. But for the milad they want to say something, something so beatific and filled with lights and emanations because he's threatened by it, he's burned by it. And everything that burns shaitan gives us more power. That's why I say more power to you, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, are all human beings going through these specific testings per tariqah or only those that are in tariqah? Well right now there's fires on this entire earth. Allah I would imagine thinks the whole world is a tariqah, right? Does the whole earth go for hajj? Yes, it makes the entire earth circumambulate the sun. It makes all your electrons circumambulate the nucleus. Everybody does what Allah wants them to do. Now is their nafs agreeing? No. Those whom know, they know and as a result they will be raised. Oh this is a month of testing. This is the month Allah grants me an opportunity to enter into the Divinely Cave. Those that don't know, they just deem it as, uh, this was a, going to be a difficult month. It started by fires and burnings and every type of sort of difficult test, difficult, difficult uh, difficulties upon the earth because the beatific lights when they come to a not so beatific earth that we live on now. So Qujjal Haq, tell them when the truth comes falsehood is perishing, zahukan. What we're seeing now is zahukan on a massive scale because Allah warned us, tell them when the truth comes, but well, this is the month where a lot of truth is going to be coming. That the falsehood is perishing, so means this Truth comes and lays the earth to waste, burns here, floods there, take away every tree, do whatever Allah wants. So that what? Every falsehood 
is perishing and zahukan they, they going to crumble. So who can stand in the face of Divine Might and Majesty? Nothing. So this is a, always a sign of Allah's Might and Majesty that we're a very fragile creation, we live upon a very fragile planet. If, the, if a fire comes everybody burns, if the water rises everybody floods. So what is it that we have to be so arrogant and, and proud of? Everything collapses in an instant if Allah wants it to. So that we walk humbly upon the earth and that we ask Allah to always be guarding and protecting. That Allah be the awliya, be the protector of those whom He loves, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, in one talk it was mentioned that jinns can have many humanoid robots that they operate as peripherals. Are the awliya similar to these peripher peripherals but for Prophet The same analogy that when we meditate, why to meditate? It's to upgrade your software. Your basic package is very limited and with this basic package that you have it makes us to feel that we are something. In the scope of all these realities that we've been teaching, one thing you should understand is how small and nothing we are because the scope of this reality is so immense. How somebody could think with their basic package they're anything, that they achieved anything that they reached any potential of what God has given to them of their soul, nothing, absolutely nothing. So then the tariqah comes, a part of that type of reality, return your trust to your Lord. Why? Because like a rent-a-car, you're just driving it, 99% of the people took the rent-a-car and stole it and they're out driving the rent-a-cars thinking it's theirs. Right? Everybody came with a amanat, your body is not yours. It's not yours to do what you want and to market and to do everything to it. You're merely a rent-a-car for Allah You came, you're using it and that you have to return it. So they go out, they paint it, they color it, they cut holes into the car and put different markings on the car. The tariqah comes and teaches, no have the best of manners, come and return your car. So as soon as they take their bayat and that through their heart that I'm now willing to surrender myself back to Allah's Divinely service, the service of Sayyidina Muhammad under the hands of his ulul am and I'm returning my trust Ya Rabbi. So that's a nice person, they brought their rent-a-car back. What happens when they bring it back? Now they become in training on how to work for the Divinely Kingdom. So that now when these cars go out they represent the kingdom of Allah So that that has a big trust, these are now Muhammadiyoon. If they reach to be rijal, knowledgeable, intelligent, good-mannered servants then they represent the hand of the Divinely Kingdom. That then become very powerful. We lost all sense of kingdoms until you watch movies. So when you watch movies what happens? The king is all-encompassing on his lands. He buy and sell you and kill you, it doesn't matter. He owns everything, you own no business, you own nothing on his, on his kingdom. Then there are people whom were big landowners and what did they call them in these movies? They called them lords. Why? Because it wasn't they were creator, it wasn't worshipness. But they were sovereigns, they had liege, they called liege lord. Why? Because they had an authority. So we have people whom had authorities, huge plots of land and maybe 2,000 men under their command that they swore their allegiance to protect that lord. And that lord swore his allegiance to protect and to serve the king. And this was the system of kingdoms based on authority and these were the men of authority whom they followed the authority of the king. The king granted them an area 
and they served according to the king's command. And all those under that Lord, they served the Lord and served their allegiance. And this is why Allah would show these movies because kingdoms have gone and demonocracy came making everybody say, we're all the same. We're not the same, not two, not two people are the same, not their grave is the same and not their appearance is the same. How could their station be the same? Not two people have the same knowledge from Allah because Allah is great, He doesn't recycle. So means the whole system of kingdom and authority shaitan purposely took out of our understanding. But for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi it's important to know these are Rabbahu and every time we're making du'as we're asking, Rabbana, Rabbana, Rabbana. Why Allah wants us to do is that ask these men of authority who are all around you that they hear and facilitate your du'a. I hear everything, don't worry about me, Allah most high, but He wants the men of authority to hear your prayers. So He tells you, make du'a, Rabbuna, Rabbuna. So these are immense realities to the Divinely Kingdom who is what Sayyidina Mahdi is bringing. So it's not a coincidence that we're waiting for the King's representative to come on earth and they begin to teach us back to the realities of kingdoms. Because we have to understand the system of authority and the system that Allah has put into place. So they have immense, immense realities when we understand these words that we use and what does it unlock of realities towards the Divine the Kingdom inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.